I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. Putin's illegal war in Ukraine threatens the security of our whole continent, and our country has been held back for too long by low economic growth. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. And we set out a vision for a low tax, high growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. This morning I met the chairman of the 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady. We've agreed that there will be a leadership election to be completed within the next week. This will ensure that we remain on a path to deliver our fiscal plans and maintain our country's economic stability and national security. I will remain as Prime Minister until a successor has been chosen. Thank you.
places to control the fact that the council has number 10 because of the law process. I mean, the truth is, when I came into work this morning, we knew how bad the situation was for those trusts. We weren't sure we were going to end up here. There were some concerns about the same. We never went to the days, maybe less until the end of the month. But the level of crisis is such, the level of opposition to the Prime Minister, the level of party is such, she's been delivered that message by the 1922 committee of backbenchers that it was game over. And now, British politics is going to have to pick up pieces of this remarkably short tenure in Downing Street. I don't know how that is going to happen. To be honest, so much has caught us by surprise over the last week because it's been so unprecedented. This incredibly short tenure, the humiliation of those trusses that pulled down the government has left this office, number 10, in a very, very strange place this afternoon. Legitimacy, because a country will look in on that new leader and say, well, who are you? And where have you come from? And what do you stand for? And what say did we have? Uh, so it's the answer to the last question would be, you know, you won't have had. But can I not copy the file? We, can I we live in a parliamentary democracy. And if a new prime minister can command and, and then I use my images. 
then they have a constitutional right to serve until the next um, general I, election legally has no, to happen. Really that was the basis upon which Liz Truss became Prime Minister, minister having won the Conservative Party out. leadership. It's also the basis yeah. upon which she is leaving the leadership because she was no longer able to command the majority in the House of Commons and therefore her position So we are set for yeah. more turbulence, yeah. more injury, yeah. and a party that Conservatives yeah. incredibly aware that over the last five or six weeks, their reputation, their brand, in the words of so many of them, has been fed into the shredder. They've got to try and turn that shredder on in reverse, which doesn't work, does it? It's difficult. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to damage limitations as far as their brand is concerned. Very, very conscious that whoever comes next faces all the same questions that Liz just faced in terms of the domestic and international picture. It's incredibly difficult. We'll also face a fractured party and will face the question that they lack a mandate. So a massive couple of weeks coming up and yet another Prime Minister. 2022, the year of three British Prime Ministers at least. I know that when people say keep calm and carry on, it's usually because all hell is breaking loose all around them, and, and that's an, an accurate description of what's happening here at Westminster at the moment. Uh, people's ambitions will be rekindled. The expectation after a leadership race is that it's likely to be a period of at least years before another race happens. It's happening again uh, within weeks. So yeah, let's look at some of the, I was going to say runners and riders. There aren't any runners and there aren't any riders yet, because so many of those who could potentially take over uh, were not wanted to say very much publicly prior to the resignation uh, of this trust. I'm just learning, uh, courtesy of uh, Nick Erdley, our chief political correspondent, who was talking to you just a few minutes ago and has been back on his phone since he came on the television, uh, that Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, has said he will not stand to be the next Prime Minister, which is in keeping with what he said publicly just a couple of days ago, that his two cracks of the whip at becoming Conservative leader, which both failed, had removed that ambition uh, from his body. So Jeremy Hunt will not be standing as Conservative leader, and I'll hand Nick Erdley his phone back as we continue to talk. So who else is there uh, in the mix? So Richie Sunak, first and foremost, the former Chancellor, the runner-up in the competition.